This video will be going over the answer key for the Describing Motion Grand Prix document. So in part one, we watched a video where six Hot Wheels style cars went down a ramp and basically raced. So the first question that we had to think about was how did we know that the cars were moving? Well, the way we knew the cars were moving were the fact that they were changing position. They started at the top of the ramp and then we saw them at the middle, toward the end, and then finally off the ramp. They were also changing position in relation to each other. Some of them were in front and then another one would catch up and pass it. So based on their position, changing and not staying the same, that is how we knew that the cars were moving. If we think about which car won the race, it was Rick. And it did say that in the video, but another way to know that it was Rick was he crossed the finish line first. That's really as simple as that. The next question asks us which car had the slowest speed and how we knew. So Scrooge McDuck had the slowest speed, and the way we could tell this was the fact that he crossed the finish line last. So it took him the longest amount of time to get down the ramp, which told us that he was the slowest. Thinking about the fastest average speed, we can say that that was Rick. And we know this because since he came in first, he had the quickest time over the same distance. So they all traveled down the same ramp that was the same length, but Rick did it in the quickest amount of time. So he had the fastest average speed. Based on those two things, we know that two things that we need in order to determine speed are distance and time. So the distance for all six cars was the distance of the ramp. So that never changed. What did change was the speed. I'm sorry, the amount of time that it took each car to go down the ramp. So the car with the shortest time had the fastest speed. The car with the slowest time had the slowest speed. So the video was in slow motion and we know this because it took more time in the video than it told us the cars actually took. So when we get to the end of the video, it told us the cars finishing times and most of them were under three seconds. It took longer than three seconds for that video to play, which told us that it must be in slow motion. Finally, Scrooge McDuck claimed he was Scrooged by being in lane six, which he claims is the slowest lane. So what we could do to test if he is correct or if he's just in a slow car is we could complete multiple trials with the cars changing lanes to find out if lane six was in fact the slowest lane. So what this means is that we could run several races and change the cars that are in lane six. If the car in lane six was the slowest car each time, we would know that there's a problem with lane six. If not, then we would know that it was just his car. It also asks what unknown factors might have impacted the motion of each car to prevent it from winning. So one thing that could have prevented each car from winning was the air resistance or friction. Each car was a different size, each car was a different shape. So air resistance and friction from the track could have prevented each car from going as fast as it could possibly go. This is a data chart from that race. Let's say we didn't see the race and the only thing that we had to go on to find out who won was this data table that lists the cars, the time that each car finished in, and the distance, which for each car was 15 feet because they were all on the same ramp. In order to tell who won the race, we would have to look at their times because they all went the same distance. And we would have to see which one finished in the least amount of time. So here we can see that Rick finished in 2.84 seconds, so we know that he won the race because it took him the shortest amount of time. From here, you should have read Describing Motion and Reference Frame. In describing motion, there were a few key terms that you should have noted. You should have noted average speed, which we use an equation, average speed equals distance traveled divided by time of travel to solve. So to find speed, you divide distance and time. So distance divided by time will give you speed. You also should have noted the term acceleration, which is the rate at which an object changes speed or direction. Finally, you should have noted in the green box at top the term velocity, 
which is speed, but with a direction added to it. If you didn't read this, it is very important for you to go back and read or listen to this page. The second reading you had to do was all about reference frames. Looking at this reading, and again, you should be reading this on your own as well. It says that the point from which you observe motion is called your reference frame. So what that means is if you have a tree in the background of, a, of some scenery and a bus passes the tree, you can tell the bus is moving because in relation to the tree, you can see the bus change position. That's how we knew that the cars on the track were moving because we saw the track and in relation to the track that was not moving, the cars were changing position. In part two, we did a do-it-yourself investigation. What we did in the case of period six is we rolled a ball. You might have determined the speed of a person walking or running, a ball down a ramp or a car or something else. Um, but for all of them, you should have had the same distance in each trial. And then each trial, you should have calculated your time. It is very likely that each time would have been different just because you can't roll a ball the same exact speed every single time. There's going to be a little difference. But the really important part was to find your speed. So for all of them, it's going to be distance divided by time, which is going to give you your speed. Notice if you're using centimeters for your distance and seconds for your time, your speed would be centimeters per second. If you're using inches and seconds, it would be inches per second. You always want to keep your units for speed consistent with the distance and the time that you are calculating. So again, this is going to vary based on what experiment you ran. The reason that we repeated this investigation three times and didn't just stop at one is because this increases our confidence in the data. So by running three trials, we can feel confident that our data is accurate, or at least more accurate than if we had only run one trial. We talked about this already, but just to go over again, distance and time do affect speed. So if you change distance or you change time, speed will change. So if a car spent less time on a 15 centimeter track, they will be going a faster speed. Whereas if they went the same amount of time on a longer track, they would also be going a slower speed. So it really just depends, but you do need to know that distance and time are those two key elements that are going to determine speed. And it's always distance divided by time and not the other way around.